It's January, so you know what that means. End of year albums list time. Now, as you can see, I've decided to do it a little bit differently this year with my top five best and top five worst rap albums all in one video. It was a bit of a last minute decision and honestly the main reason that I decided to do it this way is because for me personally 2023 wasn't the most amazing year in terms of new rap albums. I listened to plenty of music that I loved in 2023 for the first time, it just didn't come out during the year most of it. So rather than try and force a list of 10 picks that I absolutely loved, I felt like two top five lists makes more sense. And I'm very happy with how both of these turned out, so as a little treat to my negativity lovers out there, we're gonna start off with the five worst rap albums of 2023. Let's get started. Do you like listening to albums that sound like they're overwhelmingly manufactured by a major record label to be as commercial as possible? If so, Koi is the album for you. Don't get me wrong, this album has its fun moments here and there, but there are more flaws than there are strengths. One of the flaws being that there is some of the worst cases of nostalgia bait sampling out there on here with songs like Make My Day and My Body. Songs that are just significantly worse modern versions of widely known older hits. There's also Fuck It, which is one of the eeriest sounding songs I've ever heard about sex with that cold robotic sounding chorus. Seven out of the 16 songs on here lean heavily on samples of nostalgic tracks, by the way. And many of the more original songs don't fare much better either. There's Don't Chat Me Up, where we get a hilarious, sort of, UK accent from Koi on the Hook, just because the track features UK rapper gigs. Baby, don't chat me up. Are you pull it up or what? Are you gonna bring that stuff? Or the really force sounding rock track Black Rose that comes out of nowhere sandwiched between the sad smooth song Man's World and the low key club song Radioactive. You might notice most of the clips I've played sound like fairly different styles to each other, but in the case of this album, I don't actually think that's a plus. With this album, the constant changes in vibes and styles of songs feels less like versatility and more like just trying to hit every corner of the music listening market. And with all that being said, the problem isn't just that it's an obnoxiously commercial album, it's that a lot of the music doesn't even sound very good at all. This album has pump rock x heavy metal. I'm pretty sure that's all I need to say, but rest assured I will say a bit more about it after I remind you how awful that track is. That's easily the worst moment of the album, but the rest of it doesn't fare very well either. Lil Pump's music had a limited shelf life in the first place. There's only so far you can go when your whole thing is being the most basic, dumbed down version of a rapper possible. And with Lil Pump 2, his music is way past its shelf life. Like milk that is so out of date, it's turned into an entire bacterial city full of skyscrapers and monuments. And that might make it sound a little bit cooler than it actually is, but just think of the smell. The second half of the album in particular just feels so outdated and infuriatingly dumbed down. Ooh, Fendi on Fendi. Yeah. 
Ooh, work come been to down. Ooh, fly around with a hundred pounds. Ooh. I can still derive some entertainment from this album, hence why it's not higher or I guess lower on this list, because there are certain tracks on here. There are some points where it does fall into the category of so bad that it's funny. And No Hook is genuinely entertaining in my opinion, but there's way more frustratingly bad music on the album. A lot of tracks where it feels like Pump is trying to be bad in a self-aware way, but it just outright sucks. I don't think Pump even cares about this album at all. The deluxe for it came out six months after the original album dropped, and in all that time, what did they do for the deluxe cover? They just took the original cover and flipped it upside down. Six months to add four more basic ass tracks to the project and not even make some cool deluxe cover artwork or anything like that. Pump doesn't come across like he gave a damn about this project and as a result, neither do I. Now, even though a lot of the individual songs on Lil Pump 2, or even Koi, are worse than most of the songs on If Looks Could Kill, this album is just so much longer, and I still don't like it, making it a worse album overall to me. It pains me to sit through nearly an hour and a half of Lonely's most low-key music. Or 1 hour 40 minutes if you listen to the deluxe, which there is absolutely no chance of me even attempting. I'm reviewing these as albums, the way that they're released, and this starts to drag before it even gets to track 10. There's stuff here that has potential too. How You Feel and Brazy Girls are decent listens that have a cool little vibe going for them, but too many of the songs on here are just devoid of life and character. I kind of feel like there could be a decent album in here if Lonely was more developed as an artist and was better at curating albums, because there are certain points here where I kind of appreciate the grungy vibe and the instrumentals a little bit, but some Somehow, most of the album feels like filler. Lonely, in my opinion, is just not developed enough as an artist yet to make an album that's 26 tracks long with an average song length of over 3 minutes. And the audacity to put a 5 minute long glacially paced interlude as track 24, making the end of the album seem so distant, so far away, even though it's so close. Insane. I've been spinning more on my safety. I've been spinning more to live safely. Honestly, I don't even care, my nigga, fuck you, pay me. Every day I'm working hard, now these niggas lazy. Maybe Lonely will make something great in a few years. I'm open to that possibility, absolutely. But this certainly is not it. With a stick in the box like I'm Roddy Rich. I like intimate sex, so we got a kiss. I got a mom, they be calling me Mr. Bitches. But ladies and gentlemen, what is worse than an outdated rap album? What's worse than a label manufactured album? What is worse than an overly long, low-key rap album? Is an uninspired, by-the-numbers rap album that somehow still manages to sound bad, despite being as generic as you can get. Before I listen to this project, the first and only thing that I've heard from him so far, DDG is someone that I always saw get brought up in conversations as a YouTuber turned rapper that actually makes good songs and that you can take seriously. And I need to ask if we're listening to the same guy here. This feels like rap music without any of the heart or passion in it. He barely sounds like he wants to be making these songs. The first track had me fooled, honestly. It had these little sections where it used these drum and bass style drums that actually sounded pretty cool. And it had me thinking, hmm, maybe we're gonna get more little interesting touches like that throughout the album. 
We don't. And lyrically, the YouTube rapper corniness that's all too common is absolutely here with bars like these. I got the rig, she do whatever just to get this dick. Feeling like I'm on top, can an NPC tell me nothing? Sticking two fingers in a bitch once they turn around, I'ma sniff it. And the pussy be way better when it's stinking. Don't watch the juices off, that's the season. And the stomach, she know I ain't little. I rub on that coochie, they clit in the middle. The clit is in the middle? of the coochie like the whole thing did i mention there's a song called riz by the way just thought i should put that out there and don't even get me started on i'm geeking there are three different versions of that song in a row and despite that section of the album only running for about eight minutes it just feels like a never-ending hell that you're constantly stuck in the loop of it's almost impressive how it makes me feel like i'm losing my mind I'm on a whole nother level, I'm geeky. You think you fucking with me, but you tweaky. The song isn't even good. Why is it here three times? Honestly, my favorite part about this album is how its title pairs up with the album before it. That's pretty funny. The music itself is entirely uninspired though, coming from a rapper that feels like he doesn't actually have that much to talk about. It's okay to be racist. As long as you hate on the Caucasians, teaching white kids that their shades the same as school shooters and rapists. But what is even worse than all of the above, the undisputed worst rap album of 2023 is the second collaboration project from the two stars of the CDTV classic The White Boy Trilogy, Tom Corn King McDonald and Adam N Word Calhoun. It really couldn't have been anything else. The sequel that nobody needed, wanted, or deserved, The Brave 2 really outdoes the first one in terms of dumbassery and awful sounding music. You already know I've given Tom McDonald a lot of flack for his terrible hook game and he steps up a notch here with songs like Black and White, Made in China, and race war. But probably the worst thing overall about The Brave 2 is that for an album that really wants to be provocative, it's soul-destroyingly boring. Pretty much every song has a simple formula that it rarely deviates from. Tom on the hook most of the time, Tom taking the first verse, Adam taking the second verse, and then either the feature doing the third verse, or Tom doing the bridge if there is one. Adam is a very boring rapper in the first place, so no surprise that he doesn't exactly put in show-stopping performances here, and Tom McDonald for some reason really wants to be Eminem on this project. Genuinely, he constantly flows like he wants to be him on here. Little white kid, hope you like this, and I hope you see yourself in me, so maybe you can do what I did. Don't be fucking around with drugs and alcohol or violence. Dr. Dre, Nate Dogg and Snoop. Fell in love with rap before these rappers using auto-tune and bada boom. Dropped out of school. And you know I have to bring it up. The fact that there is a Project Pat feature on this album is something that deeply hurts me to this day. He probably has the most charisma on the entire album with his verse. It's just a shame that he's on it in the first place. The rest of the features are just exceptionally bad, whether it's Dax's embarrassingly theatrical performance on black and white. So it's not black versus white, it's wrong versus right, cause color is just a result of these multiple factors that we didn't choose. I mean, mom, dad, race, religion. To Social Repose's laughable chorus on My Way, really competing for Tom McDonald's bad hook game trophy on that one. To Mad Child's unbearable voice. People talking all the gangsta shit is just a bunch of garbage. Mad Child, I got mental problems. I've already lost my marbles. To Tom's girlfriend Nova being the embodiment of bad white girl rapping. I was too middle finger sticking out of slip 19. And if you met me, you either got robbed or bought me the more rap. 
from a cigarette at entrance three. I guess you can say most of the features match the quality of the album that they're on. It goes without saying that the production throughout is very bland too. It's bad from just about every angle with nearly nothing in the way of redeeming qualities and that is why The Brave 2 by Tom McDonald and Adam Calhoun is my pick for the worst rap album of 2023. Congratulations boys, you've done it again. So, there are my top 5 worst rap albums of 2023. Now that that's over, the good music that I'm about to play right here for the best of section is gonna sound absolutely phenomenal. So without any more waiting, let's cleanse our ears and flip it over to take a look at my 5 best rap albums of 2023. I did a bad game, I'd have dropped it. No one nigga doing like cause he a hothead. I took a ride through my city the other day. Logic has been having a really solid second run following his apparent retirement with no pressure, no Bobby Tarantino 3. You do not exist. And College Park is another great addition to the latter part of Logic's career. I thought Vinyl Days was a pretty great album, and College Park at the very least is close to that one, with a tighter focus and a concept that calls back to Logic's early days as a rapper. And it provides plenty of solid music. I mean, Lightsabers Alone is one of my favourite recent Logic tracks. It has some pretty decent content on it and constantly ramps up in intensity. It's so fun to listen to. Combine that with a C. Castro feature and it truly feels like a classic Logic song. Living life like a renegade. Most people just living their life trying to get paid. Good fella when it get made. Let me get up on my MPC. When I come to make a piece on the MVP. I remember no communication because I was hustling and stacking the ammunition. No, the rap was on a mission. Hopefully one day I get to be famous. Hopefully one day I'm here in these stages. While we're on the subject, the features for the most part are pretty great across here. Logic even gets Peter Griffin himself, Seth MacFarlane in for the song Self Medication to do some of his Frank Sinatra style singing. And featuring Bun B on AO, which samples Pimp C, was a really nice touch as well. So on top of the There are a couple minor gripes that I do have with the album, like the few lines where Logic raps as if some of the people that are taking the time to listen to his album are dumb. Yeah, it's too deep now. I think it's too deep now. I know you shallow listen, it's probably tapping out for you drown. A quarter million, that's my automobile, that thing in the glove, I need to conceal. Why I gotta rap like this to get y'all to pay attention? Or the fact that many of the tracks have pretty long skits at the end that interrupt the flow of the album at several points. Thank god the skip button exists. But the individual songs are enjoyable enough for me to look past these small flaws. As a project that's mostly focused on a chill, old school hip hop sound and as a bit of a throwback to Logic's younger days, I really enjoy what we get right here. It's like the box sets, Star Wars, Fast and Furious franchises, six projects, six sagas, is hood science. Talking about rappers having a great run in the later stages of their career, my god Nas has been cooking lately. I will admit, Magic 2, which also dropped in 2023, was missing that spark a little bit for me. It's a fine project, but I think it's maybe just a little bit unexciting compared to some of his other recent work, but Magic 3 is exactly what I want to hear. It reminds me of King's Disease 3, which I loved, with its strong focus on clearly defined concepts and Hit Boy's fantastic production all throughout. Might throw a roast me, wonder what will the jokes be? Watching them imitate my cool demeanor. It's a new decade, I'm in a whole new arena. It's one of those albums for me that just gets better as it goes on. I kind of see the first four or five songs on the album as a strong warm up, some solid tracks in there, but once you hit Never Die with Wayne, that is the point where the album really picks up for me towards being one of my favourite rap albums of 2023. Nas and Wayne sharing a track as two legends in the game and it inspiring a brilliant verse out of Wayne is just so good to see. I 
I left more flows in Pro 2 sessions than you ever thought of with old school methods. But what you hearing is the present day. My tongue, I never bite mine. Got dough like Taekwon. To spend all this money, I'm gonna have to spend a lifetime. Broke can't even buy time. But my favorite part of the album, hands down, is the back to back based on true event songs. Nas is known for his storytelling ability, and the way that he does it on these two tracks is so gripping, especially with part two being split into chapters. It's a nice little storytelling device for a rap song. Like he a target, a mark man, or perhaps hard to kill. But you attract what you fear and you ask for for real. Chapter one, chapter one. Fresh cut, lined up his hair clean, it's not a fair game, can't trust how they move in this solitaire chain. I was also very relieved that Pretty Young Girl was not the sequel to Big Girl that I thought it might have been, instead getting its name from the sample that's used throughout the beat. When I saw that title, I was a little bit scared. I gotta find that girl, what block she be on? Heard she was last seen in Rome, playing hopping in Florence. All in all, it's a consistently great project that really picks up with track number six, and rarely dips in quality at all after that. Another great addition to Nas's ever-growing discography. Straight away, let me clarify that I know this isn't a rap album, but I'm including it here for a few reasons. One, I've decided to officially allow myself one non-rap album per list each year. Two, Lil Yachty usually is a rapper, just making a different style of project with this one. Kind of flimsy reason, but I'm including it there anyway. And three, probably the most important one to me, I really love it, and I can't not talk about it on my end of year best albums list. Thanks to my paid request streams where people send me in a bunch of music from different genres, my music taste has been expanding quite a bit over the past year. And it just gives me more appreciation for how solidly Yachty managed to tackle the psychedelic rock type of sound that's found on Let's Start Here. I'd actually go as far to say that in my opinion, this is better than any rap project that Lil Yachty has put out so far. His unique voice fits in perfectly with instrumentals like these. I really believe that songs like Pretty and Should I Be just could not be pulled off in quite the same way by anybody else. Yachty's voice and persona is what makes them work so well. I feel so sexy. If someone say I'm not, I must have not met me. Can I know the signs? This time I gotta do my own. It's just stacked with my favorite sounding tracks of the year The Raid, Drive Me Crazy, The Alchemist. So many of my most replayed songs of 2023 are on here. And The Black Seminole, man. It is bold to kick off an album that's different from your usual output with a 7 minute long intro track, but my god does it stick the landing. For me, Let's Start Here was an unexpected release for Yachty, but I was very pleasantly surprised with what we got, and I would be so happy if this is the direction that he continues to go down. The charisma estate when you and your prime. And at the very close to number one spot, I have Travis Scott's Utopia. To me, this was absolutely worth the five year wait and the numerous lazy features that Travis did after Astroworld because it all paid off where it really counts and that's on his album. I've said it before, I kind of see Utopia as being Astroworld's evil twin, having the same grandiose, big budget feel to it, but going in a darker direction sonically, and I love it. Last day was filled with slaps, I guess gotta run this shit back Didn't like the way this shit went down at the awards I admit it, it turned to a beast There's only two songs that I don't care for much on here Those being God's Country and K-Pop But everything else ranges from good to phenomenal It's got everything you need from a great Travis album An absolutely stacked feature list, numerous beat switches throughout It's like the musical equivalent of a blockbuster movie Oh, oh I know you lie 
pop my shit, get it live. Hold up, yeah, you try to come around this shit, they popping your tires. Hold up, shit. Hey, yo, whip the cocaine to the pop bus. You was on the porch, I was locked up. On top of that, songs like Hyena and My Eyes have some of Travis's best rapping performances yet. Shit was in luck, they got me fucked up, I put you on bus and take you around. A couple of guys inside of the school, I gave them the tools to get it off the ground. Honestly, I also just think it's amazing to hear a mainstream rap album that doesn't feel too rushed or too eager to capitalize on trends that don't even have that long of a lifespan themselves. It feels like an album that took time and was meant to last for some time. An album like this stands out in 2023 possibly more than ever. Who knows when Travis will drop his next album, but I'm happy to wait a long time if need be because Utopia has the quality and the replay value necessary to give the album a long lifespan. Stop scaring the hogs, play that shit out and take the toes. Now, while I love everything here, there was no question for me that Scaring the Hose was my favourite rap album of 2023. This project is absolutely bonkers, man. Any adjective which essentially means batshit insane is perfect to describe it. There is so much stuff that I like here, but let's start with the production. My god. Lean Beef Patty and Step A Pig have the most nutty beats, man. It's production that keeps your brain constantly stimulated while never crossing over the line into being too much, and that is a very fine line, but JPEG Mafia knows what the fuck he's doing with these beats, man. And then the rapping. Constantly entertaining with witty bars and terminally online lyrics all throughout, it's pretty great for a music reviewing YouTuber who spends a little bit too much time on Twitter. That being said, one of the biggest highlights across the entire thing for me in terms of the rapping is the less internet focused God Loves You, which has Danny Brown giving us possibly the most sacrilegious verse ever over this incredible gospel style beat. It's so out of pocket, but so amazing. He's fantastic on Shut Your Bitch Ass Up and Run The Jewels as well. It's way more of a Peggy project than a Danny project, but man does Danny shine with some of these verses. Peggy has some incredible verses here too. His highlights for me are Garbage Pail Kids, Fentanyl Tester, Perfect, and Orange Juice Jones. <laughs> Give me that nasty, give me that fruit, give me that barber, check out the tooth. I feel like Joe when I step in the booth. Yeah. Yo, girl in the back to the air hard, rock like CD jeans. I'm on the ground like a young bumpy. Pyrex never let my nigga be me. Experimental rap music isn't even necessarily my favorite subgenre of rap, but I believe I've said this before, JPEG Mafia just knows how to make music that's sort of abrasive and hyperactive and intense while still making it decently accessible. I hope we get to hear even more from this duo because my god do they work amazingly together. There was nothing quite as insane as this that I heard in 2023 and that is why Scaring the Hose is my favourite rap album of that year. And so there we have it everybody. That's my top 5 worst rap albums of 2023, and that's my top 5 best rap albums of 2023. We have finally entered 2024 ladies and gentlemen. Actually though, before we do that, I'll ask you. What were your favourite and least favourite albums of 2023? Drop them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and you can click here to check out my video on the top 10 best hit rap songs of 2023. And as always, much love to my Patreon supporters and channel members over there with a special shout out to I Am Regent, KWG13270, Lucas1123 and Not Vimpen.